Ahoy, ahoy, everybody. It's Sasha here. And it is a wonderful day because we have someone special. Uh, she has been on TED, so doing TED Talks. It's actually a really good speech. But anyway, um, I'll let you guys check that out for yourself later. But she is a productivity action hero. And so I'm super excited to have her here today because I know that you guys will definitely benefit from this. So we've got Ellen Goodwin, again, our productivity action hero, best line ever, um, who also owns ellengoodwin.com. So say hi to everybody. Hi, everyone. So happy to be here with you, Sasha. Yay. <laughs> Right. I'm so stoked. All right. So, I mean, I introduced you with the most awesome title ever. So obviously the next thing I'm going to ask you is what is a productivity action hero? Well, an action hero is someone who's learned to leverage the trifecta of action, energy, and focus in order to really get their shit done. And I hope I can say that because I just did. So, so no one likes to hear the word, you know, you got to be more productive. But when you leverage those three things, you can get so much done. And if you think about an action hero, action heroes are different than superheroes because they don't wear tights or capes or masks. They're just people that have learned how to do that. You think about action hero movies and, you know, they're normal people that all of a sudden get put in a situation where they got to get stuff done. So, like die hard. <laughs> Exactly, like Die Hard. That's what I always think of. Die Hard and Aliens, because, you know, we got an equal opportunity. Ellen Ripley, she went out there, she killed herself some aliens. Boom. Yeah, and, and man, did she pull that one off. Uh, but yeah, so I, I love the way you describe it, and I love this concept of a productivity action hero. Now, let's just be fair. Not everybody out there is going to know whether or not they are truly being super productive. Uh, so how do we know if we are being our most productive selves? Wow. We know because like at the end of the day, you feel like I got stuff done. I had my list and I went through it or I had my stack of outcomes and I got it done. I ignored, I ignored all the distractions. Big thing that you know you're a hero when you do that. Ignored distraction. You focused and you, when you focus, you expand time, which is my favorite thing about focusing. You expand time. You've got stuff done. You've got your have-tos done early enough that you can get to your want-tos. You know, no one wants to have to be doing the have-tos, and it's 10 o'clock at night, and now you got to go to bed. You want, you want some want-tos in your day. So if you're an action hero, you get your stuff done, you get to those want-tos. It's all about those want tos. And, and you're speaking my language here uh, because I actually have a similar system. Now, I'm not so nice about what I call them, <laughs> but I definitely have a, a similar system. So that, that kind of moves us to the next question, which is how do we overcome procrastination in our business? Because I, I mean, I get the concept, like I know how to be productive and I know the warning signs because if I finish my day feeling like poop, that's usually a sign, but how do we overcome procrastination, which is like the business owner's number one, oh my God. Oh my God, yes, yes. In procrastination, you know, there's four different types. So you've got your, your basic low value, low priority, and we run into that in, in work. We're like, eh, I don't wanna do that. Um, we have fear-based procrastination. Uh, you know, I, I'm afraid to do this. What if I do it wrong? I've never done it. It's gonna be hard. What if I succeed? We've got distractions, which is the number one reason we procrastinate because, whoa, 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 there's everything. And then when things are too far down the road, you know, writing a book, that takes a long time. So, you know, losing 20 pounds. Hey, if I have this donut today, I'll exercise more tomorrow. That doesn't happen. So most of them, what we really need to do is just get started. Starting is the hardest part. Ignore distractions. Those are the, those are the two. Um, I don't have it with me. I put it in timers. I'm a huge, huge fan of timers. I mean, you can use on your phone. I have kitchen timers everywhere. And just sometimes <laughs> I talk in super fast, I know, and you're like. You know, oh, no, I'm just, I'm very expressive. I can't help it. It's just me. So you're talking, I'm like, ooh, ah. Um, <laughs> hey, the joys of Live with Sasha. Yes. Well, I will, you know what? I'm going to grab. My favorite timer, I know I'm out of the picture, but this is my favorite timer. 
Oh, why is it up, up, up. There we go. Oh, it's really cute. <laughs> also kind of scary, but really cute. <laughs> but it's just your regular kitchen timer. So sometimes set a timer for five minutes and just you have to just start and you work for five minutes. And once that five minutes is done, then you can be done. But what happens is most of the time, once you get started, you've gone past that five minutes, you're going to just keep going. Because and it's, we have cognitive bias called the Zagarnik effect, which says that our, our brain wants a complete loop. And so just leverage that. Set that timer, get started, five minutes. Distractions, you know, shut stuff off on your computer. I use self-control all the time. Just, you know, I block myself from anything I know is going to distract me. Facebook does that. Um, the news sometimes does that and you know, I'll just block it and it's actually like it feels peaceful I'm like okay I don't you know, it's not the voices in my head. It's the voices on my eyes So I just block those distractions and then it's so much easier to do stuff So you can't procrastinate if you can't do if you can't see the stuff, but I would say the timer Oh, the timer is just like the number one way to overcome procrastination. I Like it I, I, now I love timers um, and, and you know you can even get really unique with your timers I've discovered that if you give your cats treats at the same time every time they'll go off for you so there's all sorts of different ways that we can set them um, go, using calendars I think timers are a great great idea now how do you feel uh, this is a slightly off topic uh, but how do you feel about scheduling time to complete tasks because I heard you talk about you know the multiple kinds of things so in my world there's the you have to do it right now god damn it list the mm -hmm. you know it's got to get done but you got a little more time and then there's the I really want to do it but come on let's face it there may never be time for that pile yes. so knowing that you've got different piles but knowing that we feel differently about them how do you, I mean, do you schedule your time or are you saying, you know, I'm going to hit the timer this many times for this pool? Like, how do you manage the structure to make sure you're getting all the different pools completed? Right. Well, a lot of that is you know, knowing what you need to do or what type of thing you need to do. Because I know you do, you know, all sorts, but you've got types of things. You know, you've got website stuff you're working on and you've got social stuff. So, you know, I'm a big believer in scheduling your week out ahead of time. And, and just putting blocks in. And I do, I've been playing around with theming. So I'm theming my days, well, my mornings. And so like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday is writing. And then Tuesday and Thursday is speaking. And so that includes, you know, reaching out to people to speak at their events. It's, uh, you know, doing, the, we're, we're talking, it's on, a, it's on a Thursday. So that works. It's a speaking day. Um, but I'm working, I'm trying to work. But sometimes, yeah, I'll just block out that this is when I'm writing and I have alarms on my phone like every hour and every half hour so that I'll be like, oh, it's time. And so you just, you know, I'll just go and that prompts me because if I don't have timers through my day, I am just wandering through a wasteland of time. Absolutely. And I, and I think we also have to focus on that other thing that you said, which is shut off all of the stuff. Um, like all of the stuff and I know it's I know it's hard like I mean I work on Facebook quite literally most of my clients heck you and I talked on Facebook right before this so I integrate and I interact with everybody on Facebook so I can't necessarily shut it off but there's still a lot of great tools out there to be able to kick up your productivity um, without necessarily affecting your workflow so uh, I think Peter Shankman mentions uh, like a feed blocker so that's always a really cool idea are there any other really nifty tips that people can use to get around those like those major time sucks and we all know social media is on that list right well like I mentioned um, I use self-control which you know and it allows you to pick whatever you want that are your your bad things <laughs> bad things your distractions and and it allows you to set like however long you want to avoid that you know you can set it for an hour and 13 minutes you know whatever and it will block whatever it is that you don't want to go to and okay wait self-control is a program yeah right I thought you were saying I'm using self-control and I'm like <laughs> holy willpower Batman but you're talking about a program called self-control <laughs> 
Okay, so guys, uh, that's what we're talking about, and uh, I'm glad I caught up. But hey, sounds really awesome. So it's called Self Control. Um, Oz is on with us. He mentioned Speed Blocker, which is the one I was trying to remember. Um, so I will grab those links and drop them in. Are there any other cool things that you like to use uh, to minimize those distractions? Yeah, feed Killer. Is, you mentioned Feed Killer too, which is actually a real one. Feed Killer. Uh, mm. feed killer. I have that on my Chrome. It's on Chrome, and so if I go to Facebook, it's just. Wherever I want to go, I don't have stuff coming through. Um, you know, there's this thing that you can do where you turn your phone off. No, <laughs> that's I don't have that setting. There's that that is not a setting. Well, if you don't have a setting, there's another thing you can do, and you can download a thing called Forest, and Forest. it's an app. And what it does is a tree grows every time you don't pick your phone up for 30 minutes. Oh. Or you can set however long it is so that the timing goes for however long you don't like check your phone, a tree grows. And the idea is that you grow a forest. Oh my gosh. I need to grow a forest by not touching. Okay. See, so there's there's brilliant ways, guys, for you to make productivity enjoyable and still really effective. I have to go get my own forest. I'm so excited right now. Um, Oz did thankfully post the kill the news feed link for us i'll just pop that up thank you oz and thank you for watching yay um and we've also got a question from russell so he's asking how do you stay productive if you need to be on facebook and i know we've talked about the feed killers which may or may not be the best um especially if you you manage people's social media accounts so that I, and i mean i work with a lot of those people we are those people um if you've got to be in there and you've got to be watching what they're doing and make sure you're checking comments, how do you not get sucked into the nether hole that is Facebook feeds? <laughs> I don't know how long you have to be. I mean, are you talking like 24 seven, like always on? I mean, could you dip in and dip out? That's a good idea. See, I, I am one of those people that will keep 452 windows open. So you maybe maybe just not keeping it open is the trick but uh dipping in and dipping out is a good way to to look at it as well um i suppose we could also leverage our notifications right you can always leverage your notifications uh, i have no notifications on my phone i don't have them you know on the computer there's there is a little thing on my email that pops up in the corner sometimes and i'll be like i can turn that off but sometimes i'm like okay i'll check it but um, there's a program, and of course I can't think of what it is, but it allows you to, you know, like I said, dip in and you can schedule your time. Let's say, let's say I decide every day at 10 o'clock I can go in and I give myself 15 minutes because that's how long I need it. And then after 15 minutes, it shuts you out. And then you don't go back in until your next one, and I cannot think of the name of it. So... Uh, it might pop up while we're sitting here, but yeah. I, that is, I need to find that just because... <laughs> That is a very good idea. Kick my butt out of there when I'm yeah. procrastinating. <laughs> I mean, it, it's perfect. And I don't have it on, and I need to because I was thinking about it the other day. I, I've had it on, and uh, it'll come to me hopefully in the next few minutes. But you know what? That That's a good point because we're all going to have ups and downs. There's going to be times when you're feeling more productive or less productive, and to some degree we have to work in ebb and flow too. Um, if you're having a particularly off day, it might not be the best to push yourself really hard, right? Oh, right, right. I actually just did a live about this. That you know, I've got friends and people are like spring funk. You know, it's just like unfocused, untethered. Un and basically, sometimes the best thing you need to do is just cut yourself a break and go, go do that thing you want to do for 30 minutes. Set the timer. Go get on Instagram. Watch a movie, you know, part of a movie. Read a book. Take a walk. Whatever it is that is in your head going, I just want to do that, just do it, and then come back to what you're supposed to do. And chances are, you know, your prefrontal cortex kind of takes over and says, okay, we had that break, let's get in. But, you know, it is sometimes, I get it, I get where you're just like, and so maybe all you can do is just that smallest little thing that moves you forward just a little bit. And you just kind of hope that the, the, you know, the dopamine kicks in and you're like, oh, that was good. Let me do something else. Let me do something else. And sometimes you do just have to say, ain't happening. Well, exactly. And, and I like that it's almost like a reward system for your brain, right? 
in oh. and of itself. Uh, that that's kind of the the idea behind it with the dopamine. Now I know that you like you do your speaking, which is amazing. You're always doing live videos, guys. If if you're not following her on Facebook, you absolutely should be. So much good content. Um, but nonetheless. I know that you also work not only with individuals, but also with organizations. Now, I ask because, I mean, everybody out there, we're all at different levels of our business. We're all at different stages. So do we need to approach productivity differently when we're addressing an individual than when we're addressing a company or a team? Well, a team, all you, you, you know, when you work with teams, there's got to be some buy-in. You know, everybody's got to pull their own weight with it but it, it isn't remarkably different you know you look at the thing so so yeah let's say the team's not moving forward okay what would be the most you know what's the smallest thing that the team can do because the team acts as a brain and so you know oh we just succeeded on that well then what's stopping us from doing the next thing and you know getting better at doing this you know so yeah the team is a, is a brain and everything in productivity is around the brain. So you just have moved it from one thing to another, from an individual to a more, it's a larger group. It's a larger brain. So like from a single brain to a hive mind. I like it. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess to some degree you have to address the, I mean, if one person's procrastinating and they're all procrastinating, I mean, addressing them as a team might actually be the better way to go. So I, I think that's a really cool thing to mention. So. <laughs> You're getting that one person like you're talking about that one person is like the limbic system that's going Nah, i want to do this where you know okay we all have to move and this is this is how we're going to do it we're going to set the figurative timer and we're going to move this brain forward yeah and and they do say it's easier to get action when you're already going right and stagnancy is the enemy i mean <laughs> you gotta get in action to stay in action so you know, just do it. Anything, everything, no matter how ridiculous. Um, all right. So I love it. We have all these great people out there. Uh, they've been so kind as to like, and they've been doing all sorts of stuff for us. So I want to give them something back. What is one thing? Now, one thing other than your quiz, which I want to send them all to, to go and do. But what's one thing that they can do today to improve their productivity? Ah. Uh. Well, I hate to be the one like, oh, you got to time yourself. But I would say give yourself a minimum of 20 minutes of deep, uninterrupted focus and just work on one thing and move yourself forward. And you will be amazed like how focus just expands time. And when you know how to expand your time, you can get so much more done. We all think, oh, I have to concentrate. I have to focus, you know, for eight hours. Oh, no. You can get if you can get two, three half hour sessions in in a day, you'll be amazed how much you just move yourself forward. Uh, yeah. And now to add on to that a little bit, would you recommend, especially if somebody's dealing with like that stuck, that stagnancy, would you recommend that they pick something that they can complete in that time period rather than maybe jumping on a larger project that won't give them that reward, that payoff? Where you're going, yeah, yeah. Are you kind of a snowball theory? You know, does is it good that you finish one small thing and move on to the next? It, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You just want to succeed. So I, I get it because sometimes it would just, you know, what if I can just finish this? Um, because we don't like to be left in the middle of a project, but it's it's sort of an individual thing. Um, I recommend, you know. But as long as you get in and you accomplish something, and, and part of it is a reset too, because I couldn't say, hey, I'm going to go write my book today. Well, I'm going to write on my book. And that to me, you know, if I succeed at my, you know, set amount of what I've already planned, I'm going to write on it for an hour and a half today or you know, 10 pages or whatever I've decided, then that's great. And I get that little success thing. So, um, I'd experiment with it because some people, you know, they want that big, hey, I did this. And some it's just, hey, I got that and I can move forward. And, you know, there's days where we can't, we can't do that whole big thing. All we can do is that little like, okay, I got that part done. And 
I, I think one of the key parts here is it's not just getting it done. It's also making sure that you're rewarding yourself and you're, you're taking the time to acknowledge that you got it done. Um, and that's just a theme I'm hearing. I mean, it's not just do it. So whether you do it or you don't do it, whether it's finished or it's a work in progress, it's taking the time to say, Hey, look, I did the thing I said I was going to do. Yeah. And I, I I told this story a couple of weeks ago that, you know, tax time. So, you know, we just had fun taxes in the U.S. So I hate doing taxes. And I have a CPA that does them. But I just, you know, hate the idea of here's one weekend where I'm getting all this stuff together and blah, blah. And so I just set, I just back time 10 days. And each day I had just one little task to do and a reward. And so like the first day, all I had to do was print out the tax planner. That was it. I just like found it, found the PDF, printed it. And I was like, I'm done. And every day was just something short and sweet like that and reward. And I was, I got my stuff done ahead of time. No fuss, no muss. And it was just because to me, just getting that one little thing, that was the whole task for the day. Mm. Oh, I love that. And you know what? It's a it's something that even we use is break it down into small bite-sized little pieces. Stop looking at the mountain, put your blinders on and just look at, look at the little thing right in front of you until you finish that. And then you do the next thing and then you do the next thing and so on and so forth. So wholeheartedly agree with that method. Now I, I kind of want to talk about your, your list idea really, because you, you use a lot of lists, right? Lots of different kinds. Yes. Now, in your world and my world, it's not one list. It's like many lists. Oh. But if somebody was out there and if they're like, wow, I really need to find a better organization structure. And I think, hey, maybe list building is going to be my thing. Are there any tools that you would recommend that they start with or any uh, tips or tricks you want to give them? Oh, wow. So I think you have to know what kind of list you want. You know, do you want do you want this full on brain dump? This is all my stuff which is super confusing. Do you want the ones that, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of outcome lists, you know, that you start in the morning or you do the night before. And these are my five outcomes, super short list, but it's five outcomes and you don't have to explain, you know, I'm going to do this, this, this. It's like by the end of the day, I have to have this done. And so you know that everything you do has to focus in on one of those five things that you're doing an outcome. It's super easy. But then, you know, you have lists like, I have, can't even see. I mean, you know, that was like one day where I was just like, I had to get it all out. And and there's different colors in there. There's different marks and stuff so I can keep track. Uh, I have lists where, you know, if I'm working on a project, I'm like, I'm focusing. Well, you know, the brain hates when you focus and all of a sudden it's like, woo, hey, hey, hey. So I always have a a to do later list that just is right next to me when I'm working, that when something pops up that, oh, this is the most important thing that's ever happened in the whole entire world, it's not. And I'll just put that on the list. And so, you know, that way you just calm things down. So you have, I have a later list, I have, you know, outcome lists, um, it depends. I, you know, I don't have one universal, this is what I do every day. I, it depends on how my days are. And, and like sometimes on the, those unfocused days, I'll do the five outcomes, but I'll write them on um, like a sticky note or uh, index cards, shuffle them around so I can only see one. And that's what I have to do. And once that's done, psh, I go to the next one. I like that. I mean, again, it's that narrow your focus, take out those distractions and really just boom, let's focus down, let's get it done. And then reward yourself for getting it done. Uh, we don't drop kick the puppy because it didn't pee on the mat. We give it a biscuit because it does, right? Um, same idea, brain training. So I, I love it. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, I guys, you definitely have to pop over. Uh, Alan has a really cool quiz. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to pop it up. How do I do this? Oh, 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 like that. Oh, look at that. So you can go to ellengoodwin.com and it's what action hero quiz. So you can find out what kind of action hero you are. Um, and like I said, she's on Facebook. So you can like follow her videos. The, the value, I don't even know how to start. Uh, the value is insane. Now, do you have anything really cool and exciting coming up you want to share with the audience before we, we let you on your Mary? Um, um, you know, I, um, I just did a talk with, uh, WordCamp, 
which, you know, the WordPress people, and I'm hoping to be doing one soon. I am doing a nerd night conference, uh, speech, which I think is hysterical, um, where I'm not going to talk about productivity. I'm actually going to talk about dive bars because that's sort of my fun part. <laughs> because that was like the best, yeah, uh, the best TED ever, guys. Seriously. <laughs> that's true. That is what my TED talks about is dive bars. Uh, but no, for right now, I'm, I'm writing a book about how you can be the action hero of your own life. So um, that's pretty fun. Awesome. And I, I can't wait. You make sure that I get to see one of those, maybe if you need <laughs> help on the cover. <laughs> but uh, it's going to be amazing. And guys, again, head on over to ellengoodwin.com if you want to catch up, follow. She's fantastic. So much information. And thanks to everybody for being here. And thank you so much, Ellen. I've had so much fun. I did too. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. Okay. Bye, everybody.